Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and here I'm getting pretty close to finished with this uh, new tool, MPC 68 Cornet RT convertible here. And if you've seen my other videos, review on it, and um, getting started in building this thing, uh, it's been really easy to build. So, uh, you know, that I got to say, when they uh, retooled this thing, they kept a lot of the original vibe, but they did make it a lot easier to build with a lot of the location tabs and everything. So I um, wanted to uh, touch bases back with you and show you what's going on and, and my thoughts on the kit and the build so far. And everything is going really, really well, so I'm pretty uh, happy to report that. And, uh, you know, any of the issues I've had is just mainly, you know, me not preparing well, not uh, planning ahead, and just diving right into the build. You know, it's some I research before I decide to do, and some I just jump right in, and this is one of them I just jumped right in. But uh, first, uh, I'll just take a moment to thank our sponsors and everything, uh, Hobby Nut Models, for, you know, everything they do for this channel, and they do offer this kit, so check the video description below for a link, and uh, if you're really interested in this kit, um, it's been a lot of fun to build, and I am looking forward to the, the hardtop version that is rumored to be coming out, uh, the 68 Super B hardtop. So uh, I'll definitely jump on one of those, but I gotta say this one, uh, it's going together really, really well. Um, body painted out real nice, cleared real nice. Um, got a couple little flaws in the paint here and there, and you know, some fingerprints from working on it, but um, blacked out some of that there. And I did that on purpose because the chrome grill, it pokes through it and you can kind of see it. So I painted up the chrome grill, got it kind of detailed. I haven't detailed the emblem yet or glued it in, but I got to say uh, something here. These locating tabs, which are really great for putting them in there. And then for me, you know, this is primer, paint and clear. So if you can see in there, if it'll focus, um, I did, you know, have to open up some of the holes here and there and be kind of careful because all these locating tabs that are in here um, that help put it together, some of them have gotten a little bit too much paint on them, some not so much, like there's no clear on the, the ones under here. So I shouldn't have any issues with the windshield, but some of those I really had to take care of and clear. And then in my last video, I was talking about what color interior to go with and everything, um, but I didn't fully research the car. So because of that, um, I painted the car bright red and then I put the black stripe on it. Now, on these cars, this bright red only came with all black interior or black and white interior. I thought, cool. Now I did see some uh, white parchment interiors with blue carpet, blue consoles, blue dash or green console, green dash. And then uh, one with a burgundy carpet, burgundy dash and console, which I thought was really cool. But that only went on um, like a, a silver car or a burgundy car, uh, possibly a black car. But it was highly recommended if you'd bought a burgundy car that that was the interior option for it. But if it had white seats, it should have a white bumblebee stripe. So since I did the black stripe, I decided, um, you know, my factory from the factory options without doing a custom really should be an all black interior. And uh, like, while I kind of didn't want to do that at first, I also didn't want to redo this stripe and I caught it before I clear coated, so I could have pulled it off. But after the setting solution and everything, I decided I was going to leave it with the black stripe. I'll probably pick something a little more different for the hard top when I get to that one or one of my other rebuilders. So my blue car has white interior with a white stripe. Um, I showed that already. And um, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave this one with the black stripe and I'm going to do the black interior on this one. So I did do the interior. So here she is, um, looking really good, the dash and all. Now, they give you the two main instrument cluster decals, which are really hard to see here. And you got the, the tack and the, the main speedo uh, as far as decals, but the other four gauges, there's no decals and there's very little detail. And I used the multi-low pen all over this thing um, to detail it out, the seat belt buckles and everything, but this interior, there's locating tabs all over this thing. So this thing really, you know, goes together and it's real nice. 
Now this automatic shifter is really tall. I thought about cutting it down, but I decided to leave it because you know I'm building this one right out of the box. So I left it that way. So, oh, that is one thing I'd like to adjust or make a little bit different, it's not quite right. Um, decided to go with the all black steering wheel, not the wood rimmed. It was a fake wood rim, but there's really no other wood in this interior. Um, so I did it that way. So this thing is looking really good. And I detailed out the firewall, just painted the heater box and the wires and stuff. And, you know, there's just some lacking detail, but, uh, you know, just dressing it up as best as I can. And same thing with the underside. Now I took some of the paint out of these holes to help it attach to the chassis. Um, so, but it pretty, you know, locates pretty positively. So this is ready to install. Now the shift knob is actually chrome and it's an automatic push button, but the whole knob was chrome. So I didn't paint it black or white. Um, the whole knob on this one is chrome and the push button's chrome. So a lot of chrome there. So I left that on it. And then of course I had to do the convertible boot, which covers a lot of it and really makes the red pop. The more black and red, um, it just really seems to make it pop. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Now, the tail panel is gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna put bare metal foil in there first, get all that thing, and then I'll do the, the black back blacking out on it. And then the Dodge letters, which are a little bit murky because of the amount of clear on this. Um, I got a little bit more clear on there than I probably should have, but that's okay. I, I like the overly shiny look and it'll be well protected. Um, for fingerprints. Now the chassis. This thing went together really nicely, but you do have to drill out the exhaust holes, which I had forgot to do before I painted it, but I drilled out all the exhaust holes and mounted the exhaust. Uh, tranny looks a little funny because it gets really thin right there, the automatic tranny. And then even the front suspension is kind of um, hokey, not very well detailed, but it's reminiscent of the original but doesn't have the metal axle going through. So um, still kind of lacking in some of that detail, but it's still a much better fitting chassis. And you know, the detail is pretty good. You know, the shocks are kind of molded into the rear axle, um, painted the steel and used the Motolo pen on the exhaust tips there and then blacked them out. Um, I'll touch that up a little bit. And then, you know, the wheels and tires as far as detailing them out and they look pretty good. Uh, engine, there's a couple gripes on it a little bit here. Those exhaust manifolds aren't even remotely right, um, but they do fit. And it's kind of weird. They've got holes drilled, but only the outer two actually glue in. The inner ones are more of a, for the headers and don't line up with these. Air cleaner is pretty nice, but you can't see the carburetor at all, even though I painted the carburetor gold. Once it's on there and it's glued down, you can't see it. I uh, did the same thing here painted a lot of the wires on the inner fenders and stuff, uh, just making them stand out a little bit. They're molded in there. Uh, accuracy is kind of out the window there as well. Um, the automatic tranny, you can see it's got the step there and it looks kind of funny, but you can see that from the bottom side too. So uh, eight and three quarter rear end, you know, it's, it's pretty nice, but it, it could be better. But still it's going for the original vibe of the original kit. So tires fit fairly well, put the metal axle and the, the axle, the metal shaft that goes in here, it's kind of short, it needs to be wider. So I kind of centered it, glued one wheel on and then glued the other wheel on. Um, so it doesn't really turn, but that axle is not quite long enough and it will go all the way into one and the other wheel will fall off, or at least my example was that way. So the steel axle was just a little short, but hand painted the steel gas tank, you know, the over restored red on the underside, but I didn't clear coat the red under here like I did the body, only the body and the hood got the clear. So, but still some paint build up onto these pins. Um, not so much back there, but we'll see how tightly she fits. But, uh, you know, engine fits in there really nicely. The exhaust pipes all lined up, these holes, you had to open up and get them in there. Pay close attention to the these ones because they only go in one way. You try to put them in the other way and it gets a little goofy. But coming out really nice. So I'm pretty, pretty ecstatic about how it's coming out and it's going together really, really well. So it's looking good. Uh, turquoise engine is correct for 68. Did the tan distributor cap, which 
you know, most Mopars have, and you get a Mopar cap, you get that. And I just need to finish the body, do the bare metal foil on it, and a lot of the bare metal foil tricks, and some of the detail painting. But once I get that done, I can just pop the interior in there and the chassis in there, and she's looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with how this is progressing and going together really nicely. So she's gonna look really good when she's done. So looking forward to it. So this will probably be done another week or two before you see the finished build here. So got some foiling to do. Let's move this and just the bumpers and stuff, but she's going together really well. And I figured I'd give you an update tell you how it's going before I get it all together and some of the details you can't see. So figured uh, you would enjoy that. So here we are. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in, subscribing and all your comments. I do really appreciate it. You guys, you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next Saturday.